Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. Here's a problem that got the internet laughing. It took Marie 10 minutes to saw a board into two pieces. If she works just as fast, how long will it take her to saw another board into three pieces? What's the answer? A student had written the response of 20 minutes. Here's where it gets interesting. The teacher marked this as wrong and confidently wrote, the answer is 15 minutes. The teacher even provided some reasoning. 10 minutes is given as the amount of time for two pieces. So clearly each of the pieces requires five minutes. So the teacher wrote that 15 minutes would be the amount of time for one more piece to three pieces and then adding five more minutes would show that 20 minutes is the amount of time for four pieces. It took some people a moment of reflection, but eventually everyone saw that the teacher's response was wrong, and it was the student's reply of 20 minutes which was correct. We can just show this in real life. If you have a block of wood that you are sawing, you only need to make one cut so that the board is split into two pieces. So splitting the board into two pieces takes 10 minutes with just one cut. Just to make the pattern a little more clear, let's go over it very carefully. We start out with one block of wood. So if you make no cuts, zero cuts will be one piece and that takes zero minutes. Now what happens when you make one cut? This will split the board into two pieces. So one cut will correspond to two pieces and that corresponds to 10 minutes. If we now make two cuts, then we will split the board into three pieces. So two cuts will be three pieces. That'll take the time of one more cut and that will take 20 minutes. So we have a pattern. Zero cuts means one piece means zero minutes. We then go one cut is two pieces and 10 minutes. So we increase the number of cuts by one, we increase the number of pieces by one, and this increases the total amount of time by 10. So if we apply the same pattern to the next step, it will require two cuts to split the board into three pieces, which means 20 minutes. This is without a doubt the correct answer to the question as stated. For once, I can say this very conclusively. I did some internet searches and found an official answer key. The textbook does say it takes 20 minutes to cut the board into three pieces, and it would be helpful for students to draw a sketch or act it out because some people mistakenly think two pieces would require two cuts. But it would be helpful to see that only two cuts are required at 10 minutes each to get three pieces. So 20 minutes is without a doubt the correct answer. So that could be the end of the story, but this problem actually reached the pages of Math Stack Exchange, which is a community of mathematics. And they actually wondered, what if we thought creatively about this question? What if we analyzed every single word and thought about how we could get different answers? So here's one way you could get a different answer. Imagine you had a square board. Now, let's say you make one cut right down the middle, and let's suppose that this cut takes 10 minutes. So one cut will be two pieces, which equals 10 minutes. If you cut the board along this halfway point to the previous cut, you will then of course divide the board into three pieces. But this cut will only take half as long as the previous cut because it's half as long in length. So this extra cut will take only five minutes instead of 10 minutes. So here we have two cuts, which leads to three pieces, which would lead to 15 minutes. So there is a creative way to get to 15 minutes, but this is not the only way. Let's think about it topologically. Imagine you had a board in the shape of a ring or a torus, a topologist's favorite shape. What happens if you make a cut? Well, very interestingly, when you make one cut, you are still left with one piece. You don't end up with two pieces. So we can consider the pattern that's formed here. Zero cuts will be one piece, which equals zero minutes. Now let's say this one cut took five minutes. So one cut will be one piece, which equals five minutes. 
Now we need to make two cuts, so one more cut, and that'll be another five minutes. And now we have broken the board into two pieces. So two cuts will be two pieces, which will be 10 minutes. And then we will need to make a third cut so that we have three pieces. So three cuts will be three pieces, and that will be 15 minutes. So that's another creative way to look at the answer. But there's always a smart Alex student in the class. Let's look at the question. It took Marie 10 minutes to saw a board into two pieces. So this job took 10 minutes. The next sentence, if she works just as fast, what does that mean? Does that mean the rate of her work is just as fast or it means she completes the work just as fast? So you could interpret this as saying, Marie completes the same job just as fast as the first job. So the work is done in the same amount of time. So the correct answer by this interpretation is it will just take the same amount of time. Therefore, the amount of time it takes will be exactly the same 10 minutes as before, and it takes 10 minutes. Ha ha ha. While the teacher was wrong to mark the student's answer as incorrect, I'm inclined to give the teacher a break. The teacher was exhibiting a common fallacy known as an off by one error. And who hasn't made an off by one error in their life? If you think you've never made an off by one error, I'm going to say you're at least off by one. The problem dates back to ancient times. Here's a question from ancient Rome. You need to build a straight fence 30 feet long and space the fence posts every three feet. How many posts do you need? It's a common mistake that people do the calculation of 30 divided by three and give the answer of 10 posts. You will be off by one. Here's an illustration of why. We start out with one fence post and we need to make the fence 30 feet long. So let's go ahead and space the posts every three feet apart. Now we just need to count out how many fence posts there are in total. We start with the first post, which is one. And as we keep counting, we're going to get up to a total of 11 posts. The mistake is that people don't realize the first post corresponds to a distance of zero. So you actually need one more than 10, which is a total of 11 posts. Here's another common example of the fence post error. Let's say I watch seasons five through 11 of one of my favorite shows, Murdoch Mysteries. How many seasons have I watched? Most people would do the calculation of 11 minus five, which equals six seasons. But let's go ahead and count this carefully. We have season five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. And this will be a total of seven seasons. The mistake is counting the difference between season 11 and five and not including season five. So you actually need to do the calculation of 11 minus five plus one to give you seven seasons. So here's another question, which is similar to the first question. If Tom can cut a log into three equal pieces in six minutes, how many minutes will it take him to cut a similar log into 12 equal pieces? The answer choices are 24, 30, 33, and 36. This question was given to students in Australia and only 7% selected the correct answer. So what is the answer? Let's work it out. We need to cut the log into three equal pieces and that's going to require two cuts in order to have one, two, three equal pieces. This takes a total of six minutes. So each of the two cuts will take six divided by two, which equals three minutes each. So now let's look at the pattern. When we start out, we've made zero cuts, we have one piece and it takes zero minutes. We then make one cut, which divides the log into two pieces and that takes three minutes. Notice we're increasing the number of cuts, the number of pieces, and then we increase the number of minutes by three. So we go ahead and repeat this pattern. Two cuts will be three pieces, which takes six minutes. And we now need to go all the way up to 11 cuts, which equals 12 pieces. So we take 11 cuts at three minutes per cut, which will be 11 times three, which equals 33 minutes. So the correct answer is C, 33 minutes. So now I will conclude on a famous puzzle. A frog is at the bottom of a 12 foot well. Every day the frog can jump three feet, but falls back two feet at night. How many days will it take the frog to get out? 
You've probably seen this before. It's a famous puzzle, but it still will confuse many people just from their intuitive reaction. So the most common thought is that the frog will climb three feet up, but then fall two feet back. So the frog will make a progress of one foot per day. The frog needs to climb up a 12 foot well. So it's going to take 12 days to climb up the well. But this would be too easy for the riddle. And of course, this is the wrong answer. In order to figure it out, let me re-illustrate the problem in terms of fence posts. We'll start out where the frog is at level zero and needs to climb up to 12 feet. Let's keep track of the frog's progress day by day. So on day one, the frog is jumping up to three feet and then falls back to one foot. So the frog's progress exactly matches the day number. On day two, the frog jumps up three feet and then falls back two feet, so ends up at two feet on day two. The same thing happens on day three, where the frog ends up at three feet on day three. So this progresses just how anyone would think, where every single day the frog is making exactly one foot of progress. So why isn't the answer 12 feet? You have to see what happens to the frog as the frog gets closer and closer to the final 12 foot mark. On day nine, the frog has progressed to nine feet, but then the frog will jump up three feet and reach the top of the 12 foot well. So on day 10, the frog is already out at the top and there's no reason the frog would fall back two more feet. So the correct answer is not 12 days as you would think, and it is not a simple off by one error leading to 11 days, but the correct answer is 10 days. Because when you're dealing with off by one errors, sometimes you have an off by one of an off by one, and that's the type of curveball you get in these type of counting questions. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems one video at a time.